This is Meredith Whitney, and she is dubbed the Oracle of Wall Street because she successfully called the financial crisis. But she just came out with something rather recently that said that single American guys are going to be one of the major reasons for the next housing crisis. And I think you're going to start to see housing prices begin multi-year decade decline. You have men staying single longer. One out of five young men live at home with their parents. Young grown men choosing to live at home. I don't think she's correct. And I'm gonna share with you where we're investing and where a lot of people are starting to buy properties and where we're gonna be making a lot of money over the next decade. But first, let's address the single guy problem. I actually have a little bit of experience in this field, being an older millennial and actually using apps like Tinder, Plenty of Fish, Bumble, which is actually where Sarah and I met. But men are staying single longer, which I think is on par with the millennial and Gen Z generations as I know them. And also just because of the proliferation of being easy access to find dates. What used to start with like at the bar or meeting through friends and then getting married just because you didn't have a large, just forgive me for using this terminology, but you didn't have a large sample size of women or men to choose from. But nowadays with online apps, you literally have access to dozens to potentially hundreds of other potential singles in your area, which I could see and understand why most men or a lot of men are choosing to stay single longer. Or maybe it's because women are choosing to stay single, therefore men are staying single. But at the end of the day, I don't believe that this is the reason why men are choosing to live at home. I think it comes down to a couple key things. One is that it's just expensive and millennials and Gen Zs, they tend to want really high paying, good, cushy jobs without necessarily doing a lot of the work of getting to that high paying, cushy job. I believe in the United States right now, the number one sought after career is an influencer or content creator. And most people don't know that 98, 99% of content creators and influencers don't really make that much money. So I think that's actually number one for this generational issue is that the lack of motivation to actually go out there and build up and grow their financial net worth or their financial capabilities to go buy and own a home. And then two, housing prices are pretty high right now. Living costs are high, but you know what? There's something called roommates. And I think that our generation, by our generation, I'm talking about millennials and Gen Zers, is that they have grown up with this a little bit, being trying to be nice here, a little bit of entitlement. When we were growing up, like roommates were very common. Like we would stuff five, six, seven people into a three bedroom house. But now I'm starting to see a shift where they don't want to do that. It's not okay to live and scrape by. They want the comforts, the modern comforts that they see on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube. And I believe that that's the biggest reason why we're gonna see this shift of single American males or dudes that are going to be living at home. It's more of expectations versus culture which is ultimately what's gonna dictate this. If you ask any of these single guys or single men if they could live on their own or have their own place or their own property, a vast majority I would bet would say yes. They don't choose or want to live at home, they just have to live at home for either financial circumstances or just because they can't literally get a loan to purchase a home. And a lot of that falls back on culture. I'm Vietnamese, I can speak to the Asian culture to some extent, the Indian culture, Hispanic culture, even a little bit about the Islamic culture. We like to live in generational households where you'll literally have grandparents, parents, and then the children living in the same house. It's just culturally and socially what you do. That is not part of the American culture. Of course, there can be some pockets here and there, but most of the time, it's just the immediate family living inside single homes. And so in this current trend, when you see single men staying inside the house, I don't think it's gonna stay. It's not a core piece of the fabric of American society. Naturally, these individuals, men or women, are gonna wanna move out and get their own home and their own property. We are not a multi-generational, living under one roof type of society. Now, another thing where this is really premature about the crash, and I really don't believe there's gonna be a crash, of course, it's gonna be a slight correction, but I don't think it's gonna be as high as most people think. Definitely not 20%. Maybe in some markets, but definitely not overall. And the reason is because inflation has caused a lot of turmoil, if you guys think about it, in the last year and a half, maybe two years, which isn't really that long in the grand scheme of things. If we look at inflation right now, it's back to relatively normal levels, almost a year at around 3% inflation rate. Now, we did peak out back in 2022 at 9.1% in July 2022. And that was right at around the time where the Fed started hiking up interest rates. But you can see ever since then, we were seeing a sharp 
sharp. We see a sharp downfall in inflation rates, which is normally what happens and why the Fed raises interest rates. So it's working. So inflation rates, I'm gonna assume are gonna stable out here pretty soon, around probably two and a half to three and a half percent, but most likely just around 3%, which is totally normal and actually healthy for any type of economy. And if you look at real estate over the course of the last 60, 70 years, you can see that it actually grows pretty steadily, except there's a couple of sharp recessions and impressions where you see a sharp decline right here back in the most recent one. Back in 2007, you can see this really sharp decline here and it bowls out for a number of years before it comes back up. And then you see this sharp spike up here. That was due to 2020 and us printing trillions of dollars. And then up here at the very peak, you can see where we actually had that correction already occur back in 2022, when interest rates started to go up and we saw the housing market that was super red hot actually cool off. And then it's bounced around a little bit since then. Now, if we're thinking that we're gonna see this big sharp decline again, I just doubt it. Right now, there's just so many trillions of dollars slushing around inside the US economy. We're gonna still feel a little bit that of that inflationary pain because it's already grown so much, but it's gonna probably stabilize right around where we're at right now. I don't think that we're gonna continue seeing it grow, 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 grow. It's just not sustainable. And I don't think it's gonna drop because again, there's still trillions of dollars floating around in the money supply. Now, ultimately at the end of the day, not a lot of people are gonna be able to predict major crashes in the economy. Small corrections, much more likely. I mean, me and a couple of other folks on YouTube, we're predicting a small correction just because we saw interest rates increasing. And of course we saw that and we took advantage of it, like how we bought this property here for about $400,000 under asking. And if you're interested in learning more about like how we search for properties, how we find the right locations, the land, how we underwrite deals, and actually start engaging with other like-minded people, guess what? We literally just launched our free community with videos, downloads, and actually interacting with me and my team on a monthly basis to ask your questions. We just created it and are hosting it over here at the link just down below in the description. Come join us, it's all for free. And you can actually watch some free classes and training sessions that's actually inside our full training program. It's a great place to meet with me, get your questions answered, and of course, as always, meet other like-minded folks. Just click down below, answer a few questions, and come and start joining and learning with the rest of the group. See you there. But gotta give credit where credit's due. They did manage the inflation and they brought it back down on about two years of increased interest rates. And really interest rates aren't even that high right now. Six and a half, seven percent it's pretty standard. You go back to the 90s, 80s, you're gonna see interest rates in the 15 to even 18%. So right now, pretty happy with six, six and a half percent interest rates. Now, when it comes to feeling the pain, the people who are gonna feel the most pain financially are gonna be the college students, young folks just graduating, and the retirees. That's who's gonna get impacted the hardest when it comes to high inflation. Of course, there's gonna be other pockets of folks too, but those are the primary pockets if you're watching this right now. And if you're wondering what got us in this fiasco, it's putting and shoving a bunch of money into the money supply, which was come from PPP loans, wars, bank bailouts, and forgiving, I think it's like, what, $65 billion in student debt? All of that requires money to come from somewhere. And that money was printed in a very short time period. I think it's about five years. We printed tens of trillions of dollars. I think somewhere around that number, I kind of lost track and stopped looking at it, but we're, we're probably in the tens of trillions of dollars now. That will have a major impact, and that is exactly why we saw inflation grow so quickly. But don't feel too bad for yourself yet, especially you single guys out there. You still have plenty of opportunities. It may feel like it's really bad right now, but I promise you, if you were alive or you were starting off back in 2007, that was perhaps even a more rough and difficult time. Literally housing prices, you purchased it, and it got slashed in half, or even more. One of my properties got slashed by 62, 63% in about a year. Okay, that is a recession. That hurts the economy where everybody's losing their houses and losing their jobs. Right now, it's not that bad. We had a little bit of pain from the inflation era, which we'll call from 2021, 22, 2022 time period. But right now things are really kind of easing off and we're seeing a little bit of a slight correction. Housing crash, not seeing it. Slight correction, absolutely. Does it mean that we should stop buying? No, I'm still gonna keep buying. I'm still gonna keep searching for those right deals. Now, what I think is actually going to happen is that there are gonna be more men that are gonna probably stay single, yes, and probably live at home until they can find a career or they get motivated enough to go out there and create a career, go to school, or get educated on something that will generate some financial gains for them. But outside of small markets that will have bigger corrections, overall in the US economy and the US housing market, we'll see small corrections. But overall, the demand for real estate is gonna stay very relatively the same to what we see here in this graph for the last 70 years. It's gonna steadily just 
continue to increase upwards at that steady five to six percent year over year. Will we see a couple years where we see spikes and dips? Of course. But stay the course, and we're gonna continue to see that growth year over year, focused on three key things cash flow, equity, tax savings. But the larger correction in the short term, if we were to dig deeper into it, I do believe it's gonna be in the smaller units, such as condos, apartments, and townhomes that were meant for starter homes or starter families, such as a bachelor or, you know, couples who are just getting married and they want their first home. Those I do see a drop off because there, instead of buying something like that, I could see people and couples trying to save up a little bit more and then either continue renting or even just living at home and then they'll jump into a larger house where they can start a family or their quote unquote forever home. Now, my personal thoughts on where I think that you should be investing or where I'm gonna be investing is still I'm gonna be looking at prime real estate inside the city. This is towards near city centers, towards the quote unquote good parts. Think about parts that are like nicer, less crime, good schools, that type of thing. And then more aligned with what I do is land just outside of major cities that are relatively stable. When I say relatively stable, I'm speaking about four key things, politically, industry, which means the job sectors, crime, and then education. I think when you invest in those four key things, we see population continue to grow. We see people are actively trying to get better jobs. Those areas, they're gonna be relatively safe over the upcoming years and even decades. But right now, if you focus on the micro, like every year or every six months, of course, things are gonna ebb and flow just like everything else. Better yet, with real estate, let's focus on the long-term. Short-term in real estate, it's like three to five years. Long-term in real estate, we're talking about 10, 15, 20 plus years. You focus on that, I think we're gonna be just fine speaking as somebody with 20 years of real estate experience.